Shanali, the interesting point here, of course, is that BlockFi was previously being bailed out by the white knight that now no longer exists. And certainly they're not the only one. They are on the verge of bankruptcy, preparing for it, according to the Wall Street Journal. But then you also have Voyager, where the bankruptcy lawyers had said during a proceeding that they are shocked, disgruntled, dismayed that they have to really call this deal with FTX void. What then happens to Voyager and its assets and any potential suitors that could help save uh, the assets out of bankruptcy as well? Let's talk about FTX and the bankruptcy details itself, because, of course, the details are very, very sparse. But what we do know is that they could involve one million creditors. In the coming days, Caroline, we will know what the top 50 creditors will be. That will be very interesting information revealed in the documents as they come out. And, of course, what we also know is, in addition to the new CEO, there are new board members assigned. And back to that conversation we've been having from the beginning, why was FTX operating without a board held accountable to its existing investors? Shanali, this week, Caroline and I have had conversations about FTX. They join voices like Ken Griffin asking, where have the regulators been throughout this entire process? What happens from that point now? Uh, two things here about that statement. One being that Ken Griffin, you have a lot of people in the crypto industry saying that investors will come back. They will be fine. But Ken Griffin, who, as we know, Citadel Securities, uh, Ken Griffin himself, had been thinking about crypto and the role of crypto in the broader financial markets. And in that conversation with Bloomberg's New Economy Forum, he was very dismayed about not just what it meant for the crypto industries, but what this debacle had meant for financial markets. On the regulatory front, you have many regulators. Let's take CFTC chair Rostin Benham, for example, saying just yesterday in an interview with Bloomberg reporters that he hopes that this will help Congress push forward in a quicker way when it comes to crypto regulation. I also want to talk about supervision from the Federal Reserve mm. because Fed Vice Chair for Supervision spoke today at the Senate Banking Committee. Listen quickly to what he had to say. Another priority is monitoring the risk of crypto asset related activities. Crypto asset related activity requires effective oversight. That includes safeguards to ensure that crypto companies are subject to similar regulatory safeguards as other financial service providers. So a lot of talk, still a lot of uncertainty, but still what will have to be made clear here is what jurisdiction does the SEC have, what jurisdiction does the CFTC have, and does the U.S. government have any role in backstopping any of the customers because none of these institutions are FDIC insured necessarily. What about self-regulation? What about changes to the ultimate crypto industry right now? Something a lot of people are talking about are proof of reserves, which is essentially a form of accounting by a third party, especially, that will help, or self-done if you're talking about DeFi networks, but really a sense here to figure out whether everything is being held that is said is being held and what are those assets held in. This will be interesting. Why? Because we're watching many of the, uh, many exchanges coming to the surface saying that they will do this. Uh, how fast will they do this? Who will they hire to do this? And how can they prove that they are more trustworthy by doing this and is it enough I think is a very important question will proof of reserves fix the industry after the dent of confidence that FTX had instilled in its customers